Okay, uh, good day to everyone. I hope you guys are well during this pandemic. So today, I'm going to share with you how we can actually uh, extrapolate data for EIS and also potential dynamic polarization using eChem Analyst uh, Gamry software. So first of all, what you guys need is basically uh, to open the software, Gamry eChem Analyst. And what you do next is you can click open. From here, you can choose types of data that you want to view. For example, now I'm going to view the data for EIS of 0 0.5 molar HCL uh, with uh, my steel plates. And once you open the, uh, the data, you will actually observe uh, it in a different plot. This first one is actually known as a border plot. And the second one is actually known as a Nikis plot. So since this is a very typical um, metals to electrolyte interface, so it is a very simple um, graph that you will observe. You will notice that you will have like uh, a slope over here. Okay. And also there is like a two step, right? one over here and one over here. First step over here is actually located at the high frequency, which actually indicating that you will have a resistance of solution. And another one, another step, a flat step over here at the low frequency indicating that you will have a charge transfer resistance. So theoretically, looking at this Buddha plot, you can know that you have two resistance components with one capacitance. So why actually I uh, have indicated that it has one capacitance? Because first, you only observe one slope forming over here okay, for the resistance curve. And for the capacitive loop, it is also indicated that it only have one capacitive loop, indicating that you only have one capacitance. So you can put in your mind, for this system, for this sample, you have two resistance and one capacitance. Moving on to Nikki's plot, you will observe that the plot actually forms a semicircle. Okay. It's a nice semicircle, one semicircle with some inductive loop okay, at the end, but this could be due to uh, inhomogeneity of uh, uh, polishing and as well as some pitting that might happen. So since the semicircle uh, forms, for this sample, this also indicates that the electrical component, okay, the design of your uh, equivalent circuit should have a parallel design. Okay, so parallel means that you might have a parallel design of capacitance, uh, capacitance double layer as well as the uh, charge transfer resistance. And of course, after that, what types of electrical circuit that you will choose for your uh, equivalent circuit is basically a simple Randall's because in the simple Randall's uh, electrical circuit, you have two resistance and one capacitance with a one uh, parallel design. And furthermore, since the semicircle is a bit depressed, you can notice that uh, the semicircle is not really perfect. It's like a watermelon, a piece of watermelon that has been cut. Okay. So it actually tells you that uh, during this data collection, okay, during the data recording, the, surf the surface of the metal is not really uniform. Okay. Perhaps maybe due to a manual polishing, okay. uh, some, uh, I mean, irregularity in the flat, uh, 
I mean the flatness or the irregularity of the surface that actually contribute to the so-called depression. So once you have depression in your uh, metal surface, then um, I think your curve, your Nikki spot curve is a bit depressed. So the best to fit this data is to use Randall's CPE. CPE means constant phase, uh, phase element and the design of con uh, constant phase element is uh, like this. I will show you guys. This is actually the design. So in between the interface of working electrodes and also reference electrode, you probably have uh, charge transfer resistance or sometimes noted as RP, polarization resistance. And you also have a capacitance, double A over here. But since I told you guys that perhaps during the measurement, uh, the metal experienced depression due to surface inhomogeneity, then the uh, capacitance will be best if it is fitted with constant phase element capacitance. RU is actually the utilization resistance or sometimes also noted as resistance of electrolyte or solution resistance. So this is actually the simple design. I told you that Theoretically, looking at the border plot, you have like two resistance and also one capacitance. Right. So how to fit the data? Okay. So after you have um, opened the EIS data, you can indicate first what will be the electrical component. And after you indicate the electrical component, you can actually uh, fit it with a circuit model. As I told you in this video, we are going to fit it with a Randall CPE. So you can choose CPE in the uh, circuit selection, right? So you will later need to uh, put some values over here. Perhaps maybe if you didn't have any basics of how to fit this data, okay? So RP is actually the resistance at the low frequency. RU, okay, is actually the resistance at the high frequency. And the other two is actually the component for capacitance or the uh, constant phase element. Right. So perhaps maybe we can just read it manually first. So the first resistance at the high frequency, the value is around 2.4 ohms. This one is actually we look at the y-axis value, 2.4. And then... Uh, the other values for resistance at low frequency is around 16 ohms, right? So we select again. And then we put over here, okay, RP is equals to 16. RP is actually the charge transfer resistance at low frequency. RU is the uh, uh, solution resistance at high frequency. Just now it's 2.4. And then after that, you can actually preview. So when you preview, uh, basically uh, the fitting, eh, this line is actually show you the fitting. The fitting is not really nice, but of course, the value of resistance is almost there. And perhaps maybe what we need to adjust is uh, the CPE value. So how about I just increase this into 100? You can actually see that it will be shifted to the left-hand side. So maybe I can increase it more, okay, 200 and see, yes, it's going well now. And now maybe uh, we can adjust the intensity by adjusting the end value or the alpha. So how about over here, I just reduce it to 8, 0 0.85, okay. So you'll see that the intensity is slightly reduced. Okay. And maybe I can just reduce it to 0 0.8 and see how it goes. Yeah, it's almost perfect, except that now it's already been shifted. And I can increase this back into 300. It's like playing games. Okay. Right. And maybe this one should be okay. Yeah. And I can actually reduce it a bit. 25, let's see. Almost there.
Yeah, so this is actually the best that we can do. You will see that the line is almost fitted with the dotted line. And after you have finished with this one, you can actually click calculate. Then a new tab over here will be um, save. Okay, and it will actually give you the precise value. So the values over here is actually the actual values after the fitting. You can also check from the Nikki's fitting. Basically, it's almost fitted, except towards the end, it's not really fitted with the line because of some, um, I think, uh, localized uh, data, especially at the uh, uh, low frequency because of uh, maybe pitting uh, or bubbles and etc. But still, it looks okay. Okay. Another way how you can fit the data without manually read the value, I think this is actually a good feature of uh, Gamery, which I have observed uh, recently. Uh, being a user for Gamery Potential Stat for more than 10 years, I guess this is the advancement that they did. So what you can do is actually you can open back the data. If you have zero knowledge on how to read uh, the data manually or how to insert the data manually, you can just uh, fit it with a model, CPE for example. And then after that, you can just click this one, auto fit. I think this the new features um, created by Gamry. So when you click auto fit, it will automatically fit with your data. And you can see the values is also uh, almost similar as what, as if you do it manually. Okay, right. So how about for potential dynamic polarization? Okay, so for potential dynamic polarization data, you can open it from uh, the Gamry software. You can choose the data, potential dynamic. Okay. And this is basically the plot that you will get after you run the sample. So I actually uh, more comfortable to look the potential values uh, as X exists. So uh, we can actually uh, adjust this, going to the uh, potential dynamic option. Okay. And then uh, you can actually change it to uh, current density and also uh, change it to what is this? Apply. Right? So what happened now, the potential is at Y axis and the current density at, uh, sorry, uh, the potential at the X axis and the current density at the Y axis. So this uh, potential dynamic polarization data or TEFL uh, curve for uh, my steel in 0 0.5 molar HCL solution. You'll notice over here, it is actually the uh, ECO. Okay, the value is around minus 401 uh, millivolt. Okay. So what you need to do to in order to fit the data, okay, you need to find a good tangent between uh, the anodic and also the cathodic slopes. Okay. So the best that you can do is actually from uh, the echo value, which we already read just now, it's around minus 401. You can choose this icon, select a portion, and probably you can choose a point plus minus from the echo. I think plus minus 10 millivolts or uh, 20 millivolts from the echo. So if let's say that I just choose uh, plus minus 10 millivolts from the echo, so it should be like uh, minus 391. Okay. Somewhere here. And then another one is at uh, minus 411, somewhere here. This actually values is uh, plus minus from the echo. So after you have choose that one, you can go to potential, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, potential dynamic, and then you choose tepal fit. Oops. Okay, so this actually happens if um, the values of uh, echo is uh, lower or maybe bigger than your uh, open circuit potential values. Then 
nothing uh, I think uh, worries about that so you can select another portion maybe you can increase it a bit uh, to a bigger values plus minus 20 so now it should be like uh, minus 881 okay and another one is minus uh, 421 We'll see now uh, again. Is it okay this time? Still. Okay, so I just maybe randomly choose this point. Let's see if it okay. Yeah, it should be okay. Uh, the difference between uh, opposite potential and uh, eco is large. So your sample may have changed. So this actually happens if your um, opposite potential is too short. Probably it's not uh, stable enough. So my advice in the future is that if you uh, happen to do any uh, opposite potential um, I think experiment before PD or before EIS, make sure that you have run it uh, with a sufficient uh, time. So maybe this is because uh, it's a demo, so I have run it uh, too short. But you still can accept this. This is actually what uh, 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 I think errors that you will observe. So after you have calculate, okay, uh, then it will actually uh, generate you with uh, data like what would be the I core, what, I mean the uh, corrosion current density, the E core, the corrosion uh current uh, corrosion potential uh, beta anodic and also beta cathodic values so i hope uh with this uh thing explanation um, how to extrapolate uh, your data your eis and also pd data using ecam analyst uh, software it might help you in your experiment so with that i will end my videos and wishing you the best in your research and Goodbye to everyone.